everyone, thanks for joining me for today's video tutorial. What I want to show you is how to create this card here using the A Little Something set of clear stamps and some children's markers. Now you can of course use uh, distress markers or uh, whatever water-based markers you have in your collection. But what I just want to show people today is that you don't have to rush out and buy the most expensive markers that are out there. You can just use kids markers which are always water based um, so they're, these are good if you just want to have a go you want to try the technique you're not sure if it's something that you want to use all the time so you get really good results I actually did this one using um, children's markers the same ones here and these are just from my kids when they were all in primary school so I've had them for years and years okay I'm going to start with this half barrel here that's going to be the base of my stack of um, planters just going to place that here onto the acrylic block now have a piece of scrap paper or cardstock underneath your acrylic block so you can see where the color is being laid down it's a bit hard to tell if you're sort of over a wood desk you can't really see where that color is going so all I'm doing is using the markers to color in directly onto the stamp this is um, a brown marker as you can see the image has so it's made up of these slats of wood and it has bands of metal across the center, which I'm going to be doing gray. So I'm just going to color in the uh, wooden sections, which are between those gray bands. And as you can see, I'm just swiping the marker over um, those parts of the stamp that I want to be brown. Don't worry if you miss little bits and pieces here and there. It's not going to matter once we get the colors back in with our, our brush. So just swipe over that brown. And then I'm going to switch to the grey for those metal areas. So just again, it's the same same idea. It's just swipe on that grey colour. There's some little imperfections in the metal, so I've added some little um, sort of texture textural elements onto the stamp. So colour those in too. Okay, and then we're going to give a little huff so just breathe on the stamp that's a little bit of vapor in your breath and we're going to stamp down now you're not going to get a really beautiful crisp clear image using uh, children's pens we're just going to get the idea really of the um, the image itself um, from doing this technique hold it down for a few seconds and then peel it up okay so as you can see it's it's really quite mottly and it's hard to really tell what it is but that's okay because that's what we want we're looking at losing most of those lines as we do this process so just clean that off with a baby wipe and then we're going to grab our sticky notes because we're going to do a little bit of masking what you need to do is place the sticky part of the sticky note just over the edge of that first stamped image that you made so that you can just see the top of that barrel so I don't know if you can see that you can just see the top of that line and the reason for that is because the stamp once it gets near that edge of that paper it's not going to be able to touch down onto the cardstock so you need to just leave that little millimeter or two next I'm going to grab the terracotta pot so this one here from the set and I'm going to Place it on my acrylic block and color it in the same way using a lighter brown. You might like to do this in different colors. You might like to make it a painted pot. That's fine too. So again, it's the same technique. Just go straight over the stamp. Get all the different bits and pieces colored in. And then we're going to stamp it down so that the, the base of this terracotta pot is over that mask. Remember we're upside down, so the base of this terracotta pot is over the mask and it will go down inside that first stamped image that we made. So a few seconds, hold it down nice and firm. Okay, and then we have our pot. Now if we take off the mask, you'll be able to see our stack is, is growing. So it looks like that terracotta pot is sitting there inside that half barrel clean this one up and then we're going to get the bucket which is the last of the containers in the set so we have the bucket down here at the bottom 
going to load that up and this is grey and it has a little handle um, that's wooden so a little grip so we'll colour the, most of the image grey and then we'll add that little grip with um, some brown you could do the whole thing in, in one colour and then just add the other colours later with your brush if you wanted to which is something I do quite often but I just want to show you that you can colour the different sections of your image with these markers right. and we'll grab that same brown that we used on that first pot for the grip huff again Whoop. and then we forgot our mask so upside down I find it easier to, to stamp these upside down and then again same manner inside that last pot few seconds pressure and we have our bucket all right so you can see we've got the three stacked up one inside the other here and now what I want to do is stamp one of the plants um, so there's a there's four plants in the set I'm going to use the little irises this time I'll put the bucket away first just clean that off with a baby wipe and then we're going to load up that iris stamp and I'm going to colour that in with purple, so purple for the flowers and then green for the stems. Don't worry if you get a little bit of cross contamination with your colours, so if you get a little bit of purple on the leaves or vice versa, that doesn't matter, especially when we come in with our brush and add those colours over the top, it's not going to matter. Alright, so add those colours, the whole flower and then some green. Now if you like, it's a good idea to have the image beside you when you're colouring uh, so that you make sure you hit all those details so that you get all the uh, stems and leaves coloured in. I'm going to add some green to the bulb of the flower, so that bottom part. Now it also has some soil at the very bottom of the stamp, so I'm going to use the brown again to colour that soil. Once all my leaves and my stems are done, okay, we'll just get some of that brown back in, just along the bottom there. Right, so another huff on our stamp. And again, I'll just turn this upside down, I find it a little bit easier. Line up the top of the bucket with the plant. I might move the plate just off to the side a little bit so that it's more centered on my paper. On my cardstock. Hold it for a few seconds and there's our image. Okay so it doesn't look anything at all right now. It's not very special looking. Um, you probably <laughs> wouldn't want to send it out looking like that. Um, it's a bit even hard to tell what you're looking at. We're going to transform that now using the same markers. So we've got our purples, our brown, our purple, our browns, our grey, and our green and I've also got a light blue that we're going to use in the background a little bit so we're going to take that from this to this just by adding um, some extra ink using our water brush all right let me show you how place your acrylic block down onto that white piece of um, scrap paper or if you're using another non-porous surface you can use a glass chopping board or even uh, a non-stick mat anything like that whatever you want to use is fine let me just move those off to the side now I'm going to start at the top with the flowers. So I'm going to lay down some purple here on my acrylic block. Now because this is water-based, it's not going to dry on there. That's going to be always liquidy and you can clean it up with just a baby wipe or a paper towel. But it also allows me to pick up the colour on my water brush. So I'm picking it up just on the tip. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to bring that over to my flowers and apply the colour. So you can see how that color has just come off right there onto the cardstock. Now this is ordinary cardstock. I'm not using watercolor card. I'm just using the cheap stuff that you pick up at the newsagent. Again, just to show you that you don't have to grab the most expensive um, products. You can use whatever you've got. You just need to be careful when you're using lots of liquid on ordinary cardstock 
that uh, you don't overdo it because you can tear the paper and get peeling, peeling and, and you know sort of a rough surface and you don't want to do that. So don't overwork any of these um, images as you're adding the colour. Just a swipe or two is enough. And don't worry too much if you miss parts of the image or you go into a different section that's not supposed to be that colour. That is all fine and all part of really the design of watercolour. So it's kind of a bit of a hit and miss technique. So you don't need to stress too much about how it's turning out. All right, so just colour it in. Finish off all those petals. Again, you might need to have um, your image close so that you can see where those petals are because some of them don't turn out really very bright with this um, using kids markers as I said before so just have that close by so you can see all right and I'm on to the last flower now which is just here you turn your work constantly that allows you to get to the different sections a little bit easier than you sort of manipulating your brush and your wrist in odd angles okay so that's all our, our petals all our petals are done now just to clean your brush just wipe it onto that scrap piece of paper until most of that purples off and then we're going to work with the green so I'm going to lay down some green and this is for those leaves and again I like to work upside down with leaves or with most things because where you start with your brush is where the intensity of color is going to be so all the ink is on my brush right now I've just loaded it up as I drag that ink along my cardstock I leave it behind so it gets um, gradually lighter as you move away as the ink gets laid down so start at the base and work upwards and the easiest way to do that is by turning your work upside down so there's another one here I'm also going to add the green ink onto the bulb of each flower so underneath each flower there's this little bulb here so I'm going to add a green ink to that and then I'm going to allow that all to dry while I work on the next section so I'm going I am going to come back with these colors and add a little bit more once they're dry that initial color all right so let's go with this soil next so that's it's darker brown so the soil just here underneath the flowers and then our very first um, pot that we stamped now this is made out of wooden slats so what I had suggest is that you color each one individually and the reason that we do that is because by coloring them individually or by painting them in individually you will end up with differences in the intensity of the color that you lay down for each piece of the wood and that will help to differentiate between those pieces so just by doing them one at a time rather than sort of going straight across you'll be able to get that sort of wood look it'll just happen naturally because of the difference in how much paint you've or how much ink you've got on your um, paintbrush at the time so it's just an easy way to get that variation of color so just work all the way through Lay your paintbrush sort of on the side so you can see what you're doing. You can see how this this um, piece of wood here started off really dark and has just formed a natural um, section by itself, really, because of all that extra ink that was on the brush at the time. Don't fuss too much, though. You don't want it to be precise and perfect. We're really looking for um, the idea of these things, so sort of an expressionist kind of style. So each of those slats you can see again that I'm not trying to hit every single section and I'm certainly not making the edges nice and straight especially on this wooden barrel um, we want it to have sort of that rustic look okay so there we go let me show you that a bit closer and just by coloring them individually you can see that it has really defined each of those shapes all right, let's add in our terracotta. This is the lighter brown. And with this pot, what I'm going to do is color from the sides to the center. So I'm going to let me move those. I'm going to pick up that light brown on my brush. 
going to start at the side and I'm going to work into the middle and as I go into the middle there's going to be less and less ink on my brush so it's going to sort of push out to nothing turn around and start the other side and what that does is to help shape that pot so it adds sort of an um, automatic shadow if you like to either side with the highlight in the center and I'm going to do the same at the bottom so starting at the sides and working into the center and on the other side too. All right, and that sort of automatically builds that rounded shape by adding the darkness around each edge. Now the last color is the gray. So we'll lay down some of that gray. There's quite a lot of gray. We have the whole big bucket and we also have the, oops, the barrel here at the bottom. So we'll start with the barrel and I'm going to do that in the same manner that I did the terracotta pot. So starting at the sides and working into the middle and that will help to shape my pot, give it that round sort of appearance. Turn it around, do the same thing again. So starting at the sides, working into the middle. And then we want to do that with the bucket as well. So picking up the gray and we're going to do the same starting at the side of the bucket. Now with this bucket, there is a seam in the middle. So I'm going to work just to the edge of that seam. So there's a sort of a seam here that, that in the metal that runs up the middle. Turn that around. Disregard the handle of the bucket at this stage. Don't worry about uh, this handle here. Just go straight over the top. And I'm going to work backwards from that seam on this side as well. So I'm going to work from here back that way. Don't forget that top lip of your bucket. So along here. Right. And there's a little bit of a, a handle here. So go down. And we've got that wooden grip. So we'll just go back to our darker brown. We'll add that grip and now what I'm going to do is just leave it for a few minutes so that everything has a chance to dry it really doesn't take long on this paper so it's almost touch dry right now so I'm just gonna leave it for a minute and then we're going to come back and add some more detail all right starting with the purple I just laid a little bit more down I cleaned up my acrylic block and laid a little bit more down and I'm just going to tip into it and I'm going to add a little bit of detail here and there so you might add sort of the veins here in the center of the flower if you like. Um, you might darken up some of the edges or um, even add in some veins on the leaves, things like that. Whatever you feel like you want to do is fine. It'll show up nicely now that it's had a chance to dry a little bit. Now I probably don't want to add too much because I'm quite happy with the way these, these little petals turned out. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll come in again with my green, so lay down a bit of green. And what I want to do with the green is darken up the base of those long leaves. So darken up just down here, the base. Make that more intense by adding another layer of color. And I also want to drag some of that green just down from each of the flowers to make that stem a little bit thicker. And some of the areas where it didn't actually stamp very well, we can just put those back in with our brush. And there we have it. So that's that's probably enough for the green for me. I'm quite happy with that. Again, don't worry if you've got little bits of white space. That's really part of the charm of this um, project. Let's come into, well actually we might do that last. Let's come into the grey. Now the grey is on the bucket and on the half barrel. At the bottom so for the half barrel let's add in um, a shadow here along the bottom just with a line of color that's all it is I'm adding just a, a line of ink along the bottom and that kind of gives that impression that there's a shadow I'm also going to add in some little bits and pieces so just tip tip with the top of the, uh, the tip of the brush just adding a little bit of color here and there and it'll give some sort of imperfections to uh, that metal there on the barrel. For the bucket, I'll just lay down a little bit more grey. 
for the bucket I want to focus on the handle so just darkening that up in a couple of places and then actually putting it back in so where we painted straight over the top of it before we need to paint that back in so by adding another layer of color you get that that um, bucket handle coming in also this part of the bucket where the handle joins on I'm just going to darken that and then I want to work on the seam and maybe add some rivets some little circular rivets down the side something like that and let's go for a shadow just underneath the lip here of the bucket doesn't have to be perfect you just want to add a little bit of extra color just a little bit of darkness and then maybe along the bottom too where it's going inside that terracotta pot. So I'll just add a little bit of extra pigment along there, extra ink to make it darker. And give the idea that that's sort of going inside there. All right. Let's grab some of the terracotta. So that lighter brown. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow under the lip here. And so I'm alternating by making it sort of fat and thin. Turn it around, do the same along the bottom where it goes inside that um, bucket, the half barrel. And then if you wanted to, you can add in some, some of the you know cracks and things, some of the imperfections in the edges and whatever you want to add in. So this is the time to do it with your, with your brush, add in some of the detail. Now, our last color was the dark brown, so I'm going to lay that down. And we're going to add some details to the handle of the bucket. So just here. Might do some stripes along there just to show that it's kind of a wooden, a wooden handle. And then we might do the same to the half barrel. Just add in some, some stripes of color here and there. You don't have to add a lot you don't have to add any if you're quite happy with what you've got now what I want to do is ground the image so literally give it ground so I'm going to add a whole lot of brown and now I'm going to squeeze some water out of my water brush so that it comes down and we're going to make a nice wash so washy washy ink you can see here how watery that is and I'm going to add just a whole bunch of watery brown here at the bottom of the image to give a literal ground for my, my plants and my planters to stand on. So just washing in that brown, it's really just brown water actually at this point. All right, so add it all the way to however far you want to go down. You can go to the bottom if you want. I'm going to leave it like that for a minute to dry and while that's drying I'm going to add in a little bit of blue so I've got this nice light blue marker I'm going to do the same thing so lay a lot down and then we're going to add in some water from our water brush just a drop to get that nice liquidy blue and then going to add it just around that stack of buckets I'm going to keep pressing on my brush to, to get the water flowing so that as I move away from the buckets I'm coming up here out here to clean water and you'll get sort of a gradual change from that that blue pigment to sort of nothing as you work outward let lots of that white show through so don't um, don't try to cover every single little bit of area of your cardstock. You want some of that white to show through to give that sort of watercolory look. That's what we're looking for. So a bit more water. And work your way all the way around either side and in through the flowers. So make sure you get a little bit of blue in all these little areas here again don't you don't have to be really precise and fill in all those areas you just want to give the idea just a smidge more blue just around the top 
I'm working sort of out to nothingness. Okay, I think that's probably enough, enough of the blue. And in the meantime, my brown has had a chance to dry. So I'm going to lay down a little bit more of the dark brown. And I'm going to work on the shadow because it looks a bit strange at the moment. It, sort of hard to tell what that that is even sitting on is this mud is it what is it so I'm going to not add any water this time I'm going to pick up the brown ink and I'm going to add a really dark line underneath my buckets my stack so that it looks a bit more like a shadow and then as I work down I'm going to add just stripes of of the the ink here and there little dots and that sort of makes it look like it's on on uh, stony ground or rocky ground or even just soil so don't um you don't have to fill up the whole sheet again we're not looking to fill up that whole washy look that we had before we like that just adding a little bit of contrast a little bit of difference that's what we're looking for you could even mix in a little bit of um, gray there if you wanted to or a little bit of black to make it even even darker if you wanted a real genuine shadow underneath there but I'm quite happy with that I like the way that looks so I'm going to put these away and the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my sentiment. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment with some plain black um, ink. One of the tips I'll give you is to use a gridded board or a gridded piece of paper underneath your, um, your cardstock where you're going to stamp your sentiment. Now choose one from the set. Let's go for, um, for a great friend. So load that up. Now the reason I like to have a gridded mat under, underneath, I want the sentiment up here in the in the center at the top. So I'm going to turn it upside down so it's closest to me and then I'm going to use the, the measurements and the markings that are on this gridded mat to center my, um, my sentiment without having to get rulers and pencils and things like that. So I'm going to place it evenly between, you can see between the five and the eight. So get it evenly spaced along all those little marks ink up your stamp now making sure that it's flush with the top of your um, cardstock and get it between so measure between two of the lines so that you know that it's centered and then stamp and that's just an easy way to make sure that that things are nice and centered without having to get out as I said a ruler and a pencil so I'm quite happy with that our card top is done, ready to go on another card so we can create something a little bit like this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll give those ordinary kids markers a try next time you're out at the grocery store and pick up a set. Um, they are really useful and really fun to use, really easy to use and they clean up nicely. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to either leave something here with the video or send me an email um, and I'm always around on Facebook as well. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.